unfortunately, that communal day of rest has eroded under pressure of consumerism. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound familiar? After we see that th those people who worship the beast and are not keeping God's commandments, what do we see? Do you guys know that God is looking for men? Do we see all these things happening now? Do we see the beginning of Sunday law? Hopefully, by God's grace, we have more time. If this thing does happen 2025, that's it. It's over. If you guys have not yet heard of Project 2025, you guys need to go look it up. Us Adventists, we talk about Sunday law and the Pope and all these things, but we do know, and Mrs. White even talks about this, that the Sunday law is going to come from the United States of America. The United States of America is going to be the f foremost. Watch this. Revelation 13, starting from verse 11. This is America. This is America. That second beast is America. More specifically, the apostate Protestant churches of America. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And by the way, if you guys don't know this, if you guys don't know prophecy, the movies from Babylon to America and from America to Babylon, links are in the description box below. If you guys want to learn more about who the beast is, who the second beast is, the mark of the beast, why is it on the forehead, why the right hand, all these things, all, the links are in the description box below. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So this beast, the second beast, this is America, apostate Protestant churches of America, will speak as a dragon. We know that the dragon, first of all, is Satan. That's in Revelation 12. We also know that, 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 that a dragon is a beast, and a beast in Bible prophecy is what? It is a, it's a symbol for a nation or a kingdom or a political power. It's, it's the same dragon that tried to kill Jesus when he was born. What political power or kingdom existed when Jesus was born that tried to, that, that tried to kill Jesus when he was born? Rome. Okay, so the second beast, America, will speak as a dragon, Rome, or Satan. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. So now we see that the clasping of the hands of, of Protestantism, apostate Protestantism in America, reaching over the, over the abyss clasping hands with Romanism, first beast, Roman Catholic Church, first beast, papacy, and doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come, come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which had power to do, do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Now remember, the beast is the papacy. An image means a likeness. So a likeness to the papacy. The papacy is a union of church and state. Here in America, the apostate Protestant churches are going to make a union of church and state. They're going to unite church and state. If you guys have ever heard of Christian nationalism, Christian nationalism uh, is a movement where they're trying to, they're trying to say that Separation of church and state doesn't exist. That church and state should be united. That the church sh uh, should dictate what the state does. The laws that it writes. Do you guys see the wrong in that? Do you guys see why that could be very bad? You would have another <laughs> Catholic regime. He had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that means in, for, in force, speak. What does, a be, what does a beast speak about when it speaks? What does a nation, political power, speak about when it speaks? Laws and legislations. And cause... Cause, that means to enforce those laws and legislations, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark. So where does this mark come from? Where, where, is, the, where is it born? We know that it started with the papacy. But who's the one that actually causes people to receive the mark? Apostate Protestantism 
in America. Protestantism in America is the one that were that will unite church and state. And they are going to be the ones that will cause or enforce this mark of the beast. First here in America and then globally. If you guys have never heard of Project 2025, you guys should look it up. Project 2025. Hold on real quick. Real quick. We're going to go. We're going to do another video on this, but I'm just I just want to I just want to point this out. One of you guys, one of the members of the Discord sent this to me. Project 2025. Again, if you guys have never heard of Project 2025, it's a bunch of people who are Christian uh, conservatives that, and they want to legislate. <laughs> they want to make religious laws, okay? 589. And that 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 could be very bad. There is such such a thing as religious liberty. 2025 presidential transition project. Sabbath rest. Of course, we know that the world Sabbath rest is what? Sunday. And, it, and they, even, they even admit this. God ordained the Sabbath as a day of rest. To us, that's the seventh day. In, in Biblically, that's the seventh day. And until very recently, the Judeo-Christian tradition sought to honor that mandate by moral and legal regulation of work on that day. Moreover, a shared day off makes it possible for families and communities to enjoy time off together. A what? A shared day off. What does that mean? To, what, what does it mean, a shared day off? This is going to be the day off. You guys are going to share it. This will be the day off. Share it. A shared day off. That means everybody's going to be to have this day off. This one day off makes it possible for families and communities to enjoy time off together rather than as uh, atomized individuals and provides a health, healthier uh, cadence of life for everyone. Unfortunately, that communal day of rest has eroded under the pressures of consumerism and secularism, especially for low-income workers. Anyways, it says, unfortunately, that, that communal, communal day of rest has eroded under pressure of consumerism. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound familiar? Someone who is a very big religious leader wrote about that. Consumerism. Hmm. And secularism, especially for low-income workers, the poor, sounds familiar. Congress should encourage communal rest by amending the, the Fair Labor, Labor Standards Act, FLSA. What is actually, what is communal? What does that mean? Communal. Communal. Shared by all members of a community for common use. Okay? Communal. It is a... It's a co common. Okay? Congress should encourage communal, common rest by amending the Fair Labor Standards Act to require that workers be paid time and a half for hours worked on the Sabbath. Now watch this. That day would default to Sunday. That day would default to Sunday. So that's the default, right? Sunday is the common day. That's the default. Except for employers with a sincere religious observance of a Sabbath at a different time, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset or sundown to Saturday sundown. Okay, so they're making a distinction. The common day is Sunday. That's the default. But the other, you know, there's other people out there that, 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 um, their Sabbath rest, actually, this is God's Sabbath rest. Their Sabbath rest is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Okay, so they're making a distinction between the two. Sunday is the common one, the, the, the default. But then there's other ones who, who, um, who keep the Sabbath, the, the actual Sabbath holy. Those who keep Sunday, they should be getting paid time and a half. 
time and a half, okay? So whatever your hourly income is, plus a half. Since we're losing money, and there's supposed food shortage, and the food food prices are, are going up, what do you guys think about, what do you guys think employers would do? You guys, do you guys think employers would um, give people their rest period indefinitely give them their rest period so that they don't have to pay time and a half and when is the common day okay so now that we got that out of the way this is 2025 they're, they're talking about 2025 they're starting this in america okay look it up i'm not gonna we're gonna do another video on this but look it up 2025, they're going to start this in America if, if the president elected is Republican. Okay? Now, now, can you say that we are at the time of the end? We've been at the time of the end. Can you guys see, can you guys see where this is headed? If this happens, 2025, can you guys see where this is headed? Is this urgent? This is urgent. We can see where this is headed. What's up, everybody? Welcome to class. This is where we investigate, prove, and observe, and we test every doctrine with the truth of God's word. My name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media. Links are in the description box below. Special shout out to everybody who's been supporting this ministry from day one. We want to thank you guys for supporting this ministry. If you guys want to support, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. The link is in the description box. The PayPal link is in the description box. Um, if you guys want to support a different way, you you guys can do so by also purchasing one of these revelation verse by verse if you guys are having trouble with the book of revelation this is the book for you this goes through the book of revelation verse by verse links for these are also in the description box below if you guys want to donate another way we have these are these are on sale right now these are going to be gone soon these are going to be gone on the 27th so i think you have about nine days left if you guys want to support this way go to sfpmerch.shop link is in the description box below let me go there for you guys real quick here there's a donate button there too so you guys can donate there or you guys can support the kingdom fundraiser now this is a fundraiser every month we're going to do this it's a fundraiser for the next coming uh, upcoming documentaries and films click on support and you guys can buy or pre-order the Kingdom uh, Fundraiser here, the two hats, or the two hats plus Swordsmith Stage 1, which is the, the Bible study course, one of Pastor Doug Bachelor's DVDs, and this book, Revelation Verse by Verse. Also, all the links are in the description box below. Again, I can't stress this enough. The documentaries that we've been producing and publishing out there, they're getting traction. We're reaching over 10 million people. And some of them now know the truth and are getting baptized. And so for those of you guys who want to support this channel, want to support what we do to reach more people out there, again, you guys can do so by praying for us and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. Or you guys can go to sfpmerch.shop. Link is in the description box. The proceeds do go towards the documentaries and the projects that we have coming soon. So please help us reach more people so that more people can get baptized. We are now at the time of the end. We are now at the time of the end. Now watch this. Watch this. Revelation 14, starting from verse 6, says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. Is that hour of judgment come? Do we see all these things happening now? Do we see... Do we see the beginning of Sunday Law? We see a little bit of the beginning of Sunday Law. Hopefully, hopefully, by God's grace, we have more time so that we can reach more people. But if this thing does happen, if, if this thing does happen 2025, that's it. It's over. It's over. 
saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now watch this. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. What does that mean? What does fallen mean? Is it a physical falling? Or is, a, or, or is this more a spiritual falling? This is a spiritual falling. What does it mean to fall? It means to sin. To fall in the Bible, if you do a proof text of the word fallen, it means to sin. What is sin? 1 John 3 and verse 4, sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What is that fornication? Mm, we, we don't have time to... Okay, anyways. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever, forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. They don't have rest. They don't have a Sabbath, day or night, who worship the beast. So those who worship the beast, they don't have rest. They don't have a Sabbath. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So, after all this, what do we see? After we see that th those people who worship the beast and are not keeping God's commandments, what do we see? After the smoke clears, what do we see? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. Do you guys know that God is looking for men? God is looking for men. Husbands, fathers, or even single men. Role models. God is looking for men to lead the youth. Did you guys know that? Do you guys know that God, that God is looking for that in you? If you're a man, if you're a man, just because you're a male doesn't make you a man. If you're a man, if you're a man, you need to take counsel from God. You know, the, you know Mrs. White says, Mrs. White says that the greatest want of the world is the want for, the want of men. How many out there do you see are being good role models? How many out there? How many men are out there are being good role models? You know who are, most young men, you know who, who their role model is? Guys like Sneeko and Andrew Tate and, and, and Myron. These are secular men. These are secular men. These are not godly men. You want to go, you want to go past secular men you want to go past the threshold of human men and go towards god when your goal is the character of god who then you you will pass the threshold and when you move past the threshold you be <laughs> anyways men look what it says Look what it says. Again, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. There are going to be people out there, a group of people in the end times that are keeping the commandments of God. We're not keeping the commandments of God right now because we don't have that experience yet. Once this 2025 thing rolls out and we start getting persecuted, then we will have that experience that we should endure until the end because those who endure until the end shall be saved. That's in Mark 13, Luke. That's in, in, in Matthew 24. Those who endure until the end shall be saved. We don't have that experience yet. That's why we're, we, we continue falling. We don't have that experience where God can test our faith. God can fully test our faith. We don't have that experience yet. But we need to get ready for that. And how do we get ready? Talking to men out there, how do we get ready? We got to go through the sanctuary, don't we? Daily confession of sins. Daily repentance. Daily studying scripture. Daily being a witness. Daily communing with God. 
and daily asking him to give us the power to say no to sin. That's obedience. Daily. Daily. A lot of people say out there, a lot of people say, oh, that's impossible. But what did Jesus say? With men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Philippians says that, uh, that Christ will strengthen me. Philippians says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's possible. Depends on your faith. If your faith is weak, you're going to believe that it's impossible. But if your faith is strong, if you truly have faith in God, what a lot of people do is, they, they, what they tend to do is they look at the human being and they say, oh, you can't do it. Of course I can't. Of course you can't do it. Because you're looking at me. You're looking at you. You're looking at another human being. But if you pass the threshold and look somewhere else, upwards, then it's no longer me. You, by beholding, you become changed. When you're beholding me, you're not going to... You're still going to be a sinner if you're beholding me. But if you behold Christ... He's the, he's the one that will give you the faith, that, that will strengthen your faith to do this. Not me. Why are you looking at me? Revelation 14 verse 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You know who else kept the commandments of God? Abraham. Look what it says. Abraham kept the commandments of God. Look what it says. In Genesis 26, God talking to Isaac. Look what it says. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all, the, all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Okay? And I will make thy seed to multiply at, um, as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and, that, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my, my statutes, and my laws. Abraham kept the law and the commandments of God. Abraham. Look what else, look what else the Bible says about Abraham. Genesis 18, starting from verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Abraham, remember, Abraham was called the father of many nations. He shall become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So, Abraham commanded his household after him. What does it mean to command your household after you? After you. That means you are the example and they are following after you. So, Abraham became the, became the leader and his household followed him. He commanded his household after him. That means they followed him. Abraham is a type of Christ. Remember, Abraham is a father, is the father of many nations. Many nations, not, not, not just the Jewish nation, not just the nation of Israel, many nations, because Israel is one nation. Nations, plural. Abraham was a type of Christ. In this scenario, Abraham was a type of Christ. Christ told his disciples to make other disciples. Out of what? Out of many nations. Out of all nations. Look what it says. Jesus says to his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus told his disciples to go and make more disciples. Out of what? Out of all nations. Out of all nations, baptizing them. So Abraham become, became the father of many nations, and Abraham commanded his household after him. Abraham, the father, commanded his household after him. 
If you look at it prophetically, Abraham was the father of many nations, so many nations are, are commanded to go after him. Of course, Abraham kept the laws and commandments of God, so what are they really following after? The laws and commandments of God. Jesus told his disciples to go make disciples out of every nation. So Jesus is the type, Abraham was a type of Jesus. It's the same thing. Abraham speaks to the sonship of the many nations. Jesus speaks to the discipleship of many nations. Abraham was the father of many children, sons. Abraham, the father of many sons. By the way, Galatians 3 says this. Look what Galatians 3 says. Very interesting. Galatians 3 says this. All the way down to verse 25, I believe. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. For as many of you has, uh, uh, as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus, and if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, Abraham's children. So if you are baptized, you are Abraham's children. And Abraham commands his children after him. And what did Abraham do? He kept God's commandments. So if you truly are Abraham's children, Christians, even Gentiles that are Christians, if you truly are spiritually Abraham's children, you will do what Abraham did. He will command you after him as he keeps the commandments of God. So you two are going, to, are going to be keeping the commandments of God. So those who are spiritual Israelites, Christians, you can be actual Christians if you keep the commandments of God. True Christians keep the commandments of God. Jesus tells his disciples to go make disciples, teaching them the commandments of God. So Abraham the father, we are the sons of quote, quote, sons of Abraham, by keeping the commandments of God. Jesus Christ, the, the teacher, we are the disciples of Jesus Christ by keeping the commandments of God. Abraham has, is the father of many nations. Jesus is the teacher of many nations. Abraham's sons are many nations. Jesus' disciples are many nations. Are you guys catching my drift now? So those who are fathers, those who are fathers, it's 20, 2023, we have two years. Hopefully, God gives us more time. But we have two years until this thing rolls out, 2025, Sunday Law. Are you discipling your children, fathers? Big brothers, are you discipling your, your, your little siblings? big brothers and even even single people someone is looking up to you are you discipling them are you teaching them how to live their life according to god's will yes we know that all these things are coming to pass sunday law um uh you know 2025 project 2025 all these things are coming to pass you can die before then you can die before then are you a disciple of Christ? Are you following after him? Remember, Jesus Christ says, If any man come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me. Are you an actual disciple of Christ? Are you actually, do you actually put your faith in Christ that Christ will give you the victory over sin and death? That's the most important thing. Yes, we can know prophecy. Yes, we can know all these things about Sunday law. Yeah, the, 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 the union of church and state. Yes, we got to go to the country, whatever. All these things are good and nice and, 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 and true, but it means nothing if you are not a disciple of Christ. It means nothing if you're not actually following Christ. It means all these things mean nothing if you're not actually putting your faith that Christ is going to give you victory over sin and death. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you? Where are you at? And this, this, this goes for me too. And again, we're not there yet. We don't have that experience yet. But we need to get ready for that experience. What experience am I talking about? Matthew 24.
starting from verse 29. Let's go there real quick. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Actually, let's go to, let's go to verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. What, what tribulation is that? What tribulation is that? Now, watch this. Let's go all the way back to, to verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. We know, Adventists, we know that this abomination of desolation ultimately is when, when Satan shows up as Christ himself. But before that, the Sunday law. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a more... An earlier application for that is the Sunday law. When ye therefore shall see the Sunday law, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. There are people that don't understand this, but who's reading it, if you understand it, watch. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not on in, in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. That's what we're talking about. Remember, they're going to, they're going to Okay, let's go right before that. Let's go right before that. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. By the way, the word Christ means the anointed one. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, um, and all these things. And look what it says, for nations shall, shall rise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. Why? For my name's sake. What does it mean, for my name's sake? What is, what is the name of God? First John 4 and verse 8, God is love. It's His name. It's who He is. First Samuel 25 and verse 25 gives us a principle. It says, your name is who you are. It's your character. So when, God, when, when the Bible says that God is love, it's who he is. It's his name. It is his character. So they shall kill us for what? For Jesus Christ's name's sake. What is his name? Love. Love is his name. So they're going to kill us because we love. We display love. And what is love? Romans 10 and verse... Romans. 10 and verse 13 says, love is the fulfilling of the law. The law. There are going to be those who are not keeping Sabbath, and because we're keeping Sabbath, it, it, it exposes their own sin, and they, would want, they want to kill us. Are we ready for that? That's the great tribulation. That's the great tribulation. And then it says that those who endure until the end shall be saved. Endure what? This great tribulation. Those who endure this great tribulation shall be saved. Those who endure this great tribulation shall be saved. 2025. 2025. It looks like it's going to start 2025. If you guys... <laughs> It says in Acts, I, b I believe it's in Acts 22 and verse 14. Let's see, if, let's see if this is where we need to go. Nope, Acts 14 probably in verse 22. Acts 14 and verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. To continue, in the, that means to endure, to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because tribulation worketh patience, says Romans. And tribula if tribulation worketh patience, what does it say about the people who are keeping the commandments of God in Revelation 14 and verse 12? Here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Patience is a result of you enduring through tribulation. And once you have that type of patience, you, are, you will become one of these saints that keep the commandments of God, even though they are trying to, people are going to try to kill you for His name's sake. 
you still have faith in God to keep His commandments. That's what I mean by tribulation. That's what I mean by we need to get ready. Yes, these things are coming soon. All market the beast. All these things are, are happening. Are we ready for it? Are we ready? And again, I'm talking to the men out there. Are you discipling your children, your wives, men? Don't be like Lot. Lot most likely did not disciple his wife. His wife still had the, the, the city mindset. She looked back and turned into salt. She looked back. That means she wanted to go over there. She didn't want to go over there to the wilderness. And even, even Lot didn't want to go to where God, God wanted him to go. God said, God said, hey, look, I have, a, I have a place for you out there in the mountains. Nope, let me go to, this, to, to the city of Zor. Let me go there instead, please. Lot probably did not disciple his wife properly. So men, men. Whether you are whether you are a father, husband, husband and father, big brother, even if you're single, there is someone looking up to you. Are you discipling them? Are you discipling your wives? Are you discipling your children? Are you discipling your little sister and little brother? Are you discipling someone in the church that is looking up to you? You discipling them or not? What are you doing? What are you doing? This goes to me too. What am I doing? Do I have faith in God? How am I practicing my faith? It's coming soon. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again, Father, for this opportunity to study. Please, Father, please be with us. Help us, Father, to be disciples of you. Help us, Father, to, to learn from you, Father, to walk like Christ, to live like Christ. To have faith like Christ, the faith of Christ, that faith that is tried by fire and endured. Help us to endure, Father. The Bible says, your word says, Father, that those who endure until the end shall be saved. This is most important, Father, to endure, endurance, patience. Help us to be this way, Father. Help us to reflect the character of Christ. We know, Father, that we don't have that right now. But it is my prayer, Father, that you help us. It is my prayer, Father, that the men out there that are watching this right now, that you help them and me, Father, to not only disciple our wives, but also disciple, disciple our children, disciple our little sisters and brothers, and disciple anybody, Father, that is looking up to us, that are looking at us. Help us to be an example, Father, to command our household after us as we follow you. Help us, Father, to be examples. Save us, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says that we don't know when we're going to die. We can make it to the end. We can make it to the end. Some of us are not going to make it to the end. Some of us are, some of us are going to die before then. What are you doing? What are you doing? Thank you guys again for, for coming by. Um, again, my name is Tiller. You guys can follow me on all social media. Links are in the description box below. Special shout out again to, to for anybody who's been um, supporting this ministry. If you guys want to support, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv via PayPal. The link is in the description box. If you guys want to donate a different way, you guys can purchase one of these. Revelation verse by verse. If you guys are having trouble with the book of Revelation, this is the book for you. It goes through the book of Revelation verse by verse. Links for these are also in the description box below. Or you guys can purchase these two hats. We have two bundles right now. Again, we got two bundles. SFPmerch.shop. You guys can donate there too. There's a donate button there. Or you guys can participate in, in the Kingdom Fundraiser support. You guys can either buy the two hats or the two hats plus the Swordsmith Stage 1 course, Bible study course, the DVD, a DVD from Pastor Doug Bachelor, um, and the Revelation verse by verse uh, devotional as well is on there. 
all these things all the links for these things are in the description box below and again guys we are reaching multiple millions more than 10 million people um, with these videos that we're doing and, and, and the, the proceeds for the donation the proceeds of the donations and the and all these things go towards the documentaries that we're doing and publishing and these documentaries are reaching a lot of people and we want to reach more people so that more people can get baptized you guys can help with that by your prayers and donations and support so please if you guys are inspired to do so pray for this ministry Pray for us to spread the gospel and also donate at schoolforprofits.tv and sfpmerch.shop. All the links are in the description box below. Thank you guys. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Navocado Grease.